What's up? I'm Daniel and welcome to my shop. This is my crosscut sled. I've used this thing for several years and quite frankly, I think it's time to be retired. So today we're gonna make a new one. Let's go. I think I'm gonna use this piece of wood. It needs a little cleaned up, but it'll work great. So I'm gonna replicate those. I'm gonna go measure them. Looks like two and three quarter inches. And then I doubled them up. Dust collector, dust collector, dust collector. This uh, tight bond speed set gunks up the tip really easy. I mean, it would probably help if I put the cap back on, but who's got time for that? Oh my God. It's so <laughs> caked. Get in there. Oh, this is gonna make for great content right here. I need my all. My goodness, this is bad. The next step is uh, gluing these together because I want to have these rails doubled up. This little glue brush or roller is fantastic. It's silicone, it spreads the glue great. And then when you're done, the glue pulls right off which is the fun part. I mean, you could clean it with water, but it's more fun to pull the dried glue off. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut this to length. Right now it's at about 46 and I want it a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna rip it down on the table saw. Thanks, micro jig. <laughs> Pick those up. <laughs> All right, for this sled, I'm gonna incorporate these micro jig dovetail clamps. I think they're gonna be super handy on this new version of this sled. Also, because they're dovetail clamps, they have a little dovetail piece right here. They also make a dovetail bit you can put in your router table so that they fit together perfectly and they create a nice clamping force. You'll see what I'm talking about. Sure to clean out your collet. These Izzy Swan quick clamps are awesome. So we're gonna go right in the middle, so. I'm gonna put the fence at 12 inches. Or at least close to. So obviously, 
hopefully this is gonna be the top portion of our crosscut sled. Now I wanna figure out where I want the blade to come up. I usually want it a little offset. Or maybe right in the middle. Right in the middle seems good. Let's do right in the middle. All right. Now it's time to make the runners for the sled. I'm gonna use this red oak that I've had in my rack for God knows how long. I'm gonna measure the depth of the, the guide slots, 0.415. And the width, almost three quarters. Perfect. So you wanna get these runners to where they're tight in the track, but not so tight that you can't move it. That's a little too tight currently. So we're gonna trim it down. So we moved it over just a hair and that is much better much much better so that would be our piece this will go on the fire next step we have to cut it to height uh i think the height was just under half inch you want it to be shorter than the actual slot So that's still too tall. We want that to sit beneath the top of the cast iron. So we're gonna trim it off just a little bit more. There we go. That is perfection. Now that we got these cut, what we want to do is attach them to the the base piece that's over here that we already cut earlier. So in order to do that, I've already got this press. I got washers. We're gonna put washers in these slots and you'll see what that's for in a second. All right, now that the washers are in the slots, when you put the track into the slot, the track itself will sit up just a hair above the table saw. And that's exactly what we want for this moment. I'm gonna bring these back and line them up with the edge of the saw. We got the fence locked down and in position where I want the board. I'm gonna mark where the track is on the board on either side. Okay. We're gonna take just a few dabs of CA glue. Not too much, you don't wanna overdo it on three spots on the ends and on the middle. I made these lines so I know where to spray the accelerator. This will make an instant bond with the CA glue. Give it about 15, 20 seconds. So I guess it's not that instant, right? But you don't wanna pull this up before it's cured. And voila. Now we're gonna countersink some screws in there to attach it. All right, we're gonna do a pilot hole. All right, we're gonna use a countersink bit so that the screw sits flush with the track. Like so. And I should have had this ready to go, but I didn't. <laughs> oh, here we go.
Now we're gonna flip it over and see if it still fits. But first, we should probably remove those washers that we put there before. It's a little tight, but nothing a little paste wax won't fix. Excellent. All right, time to take the rails, the front and back rails out of clamps. Because we use the type on speed set, should be good to go. Yeah, one solid piece. Look at what happened. Look at what happened. What are the odds? All right. Right now we're gonna put on the back rail. It's not as important as the front rail. So this can just be put on, kind of eyeballing it. Little glue, little clampage, little jed clampage. I mean, you do want it to be, to at least look square. And you'll see why I'm putting the clamps on like this in a second. Right. See all that glue? We gotta clean that up right now. Tight. We're going to countersink some screws in there to hold it in place. Now it's important that uh, when you put screws in the backside here, that you don't put one anywhere near where the blade is going to be. The blade here should be in the middle between the rails. So I'm not going to put a screw anywhere in this area. side and we're going to countersink one screw on this side for the time being. No glue. Once you get this perfectly lined up you want to clamp this down so it does not move. All right for my purposes this is plenty square enough, but there are other ways to get this really, really square and dialed in. Uh, for instance, the five cut method. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'll put links in the description below. All right, so there's a bit of a bow in this rail, I noticed. It's really minimal, but I'm gonna put a clamp on there and see if I can't pull it into straight. Oh my 
my gosh, it's gonna work. Look at that. Like a glove! Bingo. Uh, let's put one more clamp on there just to uh, be 100% sure, eh? I made a bit of a boo-boo. Um, this should be taller because I have a stop block that I'm gonna put on here and some T-track and I totally spaced it off. So it needs to be a little taller to accommodate said stop block and T-track. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right. So the top of those rails are 43 and a half. That's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna go a little bougie and use Paduke. Padauk. I pronounce it Paduke. If you pronounce it any other way, you're wrong. Probably move those screws. Seriously? I didn't realize I had these. I just bought a whole nother set of these because I couldn't find these. And they're just right there. No big deal. Organization is key. Because I'm going to route into the top of this, I can't use screws. So we're going to use some speed set in clamps. And I'm going to let it overhang a little bit on this side because I can flush trim that and it'll be perfect. The back rail, it can have all the screws you want, just as long as they don't ever get anywhere near the blade. So we're going to drop some screws in there along with the glue. So in order to accommodate the stop block that I got from Katz Moses, uh, we're gonna put in this Armor Tool T-Track. Now this Armor Tool T-Track is made from aluminum and the cool thing about aluminum is you can use regular woodworking tools to cut it. So that's what I'm gonna do. That was a bad idea. All right, here goes the, uh, the f is that called? The first, what's the first thing like? Demonstration? Nope. When a ship goes out on the water for the first time, what is that called? Maiden voyage. Maiden voyage. By the way, I do a podcast, you know, where I talk for a living. It's really bad. Oh, uh, here we go. Maiden Voyage! Time to 
Check the squareness. Look at that. Perfection. Now let's talk about stuff that's not perfect, shall we? Oh man. So, <laughs> if you remember correctly, when we first started this, I incorporated these into the sled. And I was, I was feeling pretty good about myself. And then uh, just before we did the uh, maiden voyage here, I realized these are going the wrong way. These clamps will only work properly with this sled if these dados, these dovetail dados are going this way, parallel with the saw blade. So I'm gonna have to tackle that at a different time. Until then, it's been fun. Be sure to subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. And uh, can you splice that? So anyways, if you like mistakes and you like me, be sure to subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Share this with your grandma if you would. I'm sure she'd enjoy it. Uh, until next time, be kind to one another.